Hey there, welcome to Home Runner. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how I edit my running shoe review videos. First, I'm going to talk about the hardware and the software that I use. Then I'm going to go through an overview of the process that I go through. And finally, I'm going to show you some of my favorite editing clips. I'm making this video for several reasons. I teach a class on YouTube and I thought some of the videos that I made for the class uh, regular viewers might like to see and uh, I made one about process, a second about equipment, I'll link them at the end. This one is about editing and at the end of this video, if you watched the other two, you should have an overview of how the whole thing works for me. I use Apple Macs for editing. I have a 27 inch iMac, it's acting up a bit, so I then started using a 14 inch MacBook and a 27 inch monitor by Dell plugged in. Um, I make a lot of videos on the fly. So I was making one in Buckeye, Arizona and plan to make more. And so I bought myself a 16 inch MacBook. It's, it's big and clunky, but a good balance of screen real estate that I can see in a hotel room and processing power. Sometimes broadband might not be so good on your travels and you want to do things as quickly as possible. It's very handy for when I'm vlogging. So uh, I can edit the whole video because they're not that complicated on the laptop on my lap whilst watching the TV as I did this weekend. If I'm doing a longer video like this one, then I'll edit it on the um, MacBook plugged into two monitors. So uh, that's the setup. Uh, I'll show you at some point in this video, I'll show you a picture of me editing and you'll see the setup. Uh, I clean up the desk because it's usually full of stuff, but I'll try and clean it up as if I lived in some clean world. Um, what I would suggest is spend the money on the processing power. The more processing power, the quicker the videos go. And then after that, on a big screen plug in and as has most of these things in computers, a Windows alternative is probably going to be a lot cheaper. Looking down at my feet where deliberately to the music and the same is true uh, as I come down the stairs there's a sort of dum, 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 dum going on in the music. In terms of software, I use the Adobe Creative Suite. Um, I'm a bit of a novice to, to the Adobe Creative Suite, but I, I learn stuff on LinkedIn Learning. I watch a huge amount of YouTube videos. Uh, my favorite is Adobe in a minute, but I watch lots of ones about equipment, gear, editing, all that sort of stuff. Um, when I went to college, there, was no, there were no computers. I think there was one or two somewhere in the university. We didn't have access to anybody, any of them. There were no mobile phones and there was no internet. But somehow or other, I picked those up. That's what I'm good at. I'm good at picking up skills. And uh, so I'm good at that. And that's how I got to picking up the skills to enable me to do this. The important thing here is the creative process. Hardware and software are simply tools. And one of the things I've noticed as, as I've gotten older, people spend so much time talking about how to use hardware and how to use software, including me, I suppose. Um, but it's the creative process that matters. And when I was in college, we didn't talk a lot about how our T-squares and our pencils were so fantastic. We largely concentrated on the work in the creative process. And that's what I'd like to get across here. Don't be a slave to technology. Technology is there to support creative process. I remember when mirrored glass first came out on facades of buildings, somebody would build, an architect would design this mirrored glass building opposite a Victorian uh, building and the reflections in it looked great and then the architect of the Victorian building would demolish it and build, he thought, oh, I like that mirrored glass building. They'd build a mirrored glass building and all of a sudden you have two mirrored glass buildings reflecting each other, pointless. Get the technology to support your creative process. Work out that first and then let the tech follow. Editing is by far the most time consuming part of this process. Um, the more footage you take, the more editing you're gonna do. The more complex effects you wanna do, the more time it's gonna take. Uh, this is just an overview and you can ask detailed questions down below in the comments and I'll happily answer them or make a detailed video about some aspect that you're interested in. But for, for the moment, this is just an overview of how I make the videos. Ah uh, yes, disclaimer time. What works for me may not work for you. Um, I don't have a perfect workflow or a perfect uh, solution in this, but it sort of works for me. And every week I try and make incremental improvements, get a little bit better at it. One of the great joys of making YouTube videos, and particularly to a deadline is they have to go up. They're never perfect. They're small scale improvements, but particularly for the students, uh, this sort of way of doing something every week, um, is a really good way of learning to work to deadlines with clients. There's a sort of 
enforced thing where it'll never be perfect, but be good enough to go up there. And if you looked at all of the videos of mine going back, you would be able to see a little bit of improvements, hopefully, hopefully not disimprovements along the way. Before we jump in, let's talk about backup. You need to back up your data. Uh, I don't know how many students have had crying in front of me for genuine reasons that something has gone wrong, their house has gone on fire, they've had their laptop stolen, their files have been corrupt. And I've personally had all of those happen to me. Um, so I, I huge sympathy, um, but I can't afford to lose time. Time is the most precious thing to me. Um, I back up a minimum of every 20 minutes. I could probably afford to lose 20 minutes in a day. I'd be grim, but I could do it. But I back up every 20 minutes. I back up locally and I also back up onto the cloud to Dropbox. Um, and what I do is, is I don't always keep the same file name. What I do is I change it. So in, in this video that I'm going to show you edit me editing my Takumi Sen 8 video, I saved it and renamed it 26 times. Now what that means is that if, if in version 26, I've made a major error and I do and I delete too much stuff and I can't figure my way back, I can go back to 25. Uh, so that works. Or if the file was to get corrupt, it's amazing how often, I mean, it's not that often, but files do become corrupt and being able to go back to an earlier pre-corrupted version is always helpful. It's really important that you organize your data. Um, I have my way of doing it and, and you will have your own way of doing it, but what's important. So in mine, you'll see some, I'll show some clips of this, but I separate each project. I give the project a number um, and I put in three things. Assets, which are the inputs, the sound, the video, etc. Movies, which are the outputs, what I'm going to upload to YouTube and projects, which is the bit in the middle, the bit between the, <laughs> the inputs and the outputs in Premiere Pro. But whatever way you do it, do it. I made a running review video a few weeks ago of the Adidas Adizero Takumi Sen 8. And I showed you some pictures in the previous video of the filming I was using with it. And in this particular video, I'm going to show you how I edited that running version of the video and the overall video. Um, one thing to say is um, I'm editing before I start editing. So for instance, I had listened to the music track, which is key to what I'm doing at least six months previously, numerous times. Um, and, and many other tracks to try. And I'm always trying to figure out what might go with a particular shoe. And in this particular one, I listened on the way out. I'll show you a clip of me on the way out listening to the music because I want to do that so that I have an idea of the shots I want to take. Because if I can do that efficiently, I have less, have less shots and less stuff to edit when I get back. Um, and so I tried to do that. It was complicated by the fact that I was trying to make a video of a running review and also make a video of me making a video of running review. So that was complicated, but I was listening on the way out and then I also listened on the way back. So on the way back, I had got the footage. I always love that word in, <laughs> in relation to my running videos, but I got the footage and I'm trying to think how it might go. I haven't seen the footage, but I have a good idea what I, at least I'm, I know what I started with. And um, I'm trying to figure out how that might go with the music before I get back home and sit down at the editing station. So here's a clip of me on the way out, uh, all jacked it up because it's cold in the morning, trying to listen to the music to kind of find out some of the shots to take on the way out. Well, we're driving along on our way out to Monkstown. Uh, the sat nav goes off every now and then. But just to give you an idea of what the Insta360 is like, and uh, there's a guy driving on completely the wrong side of the road. Uh, <laughs> he's trying not to meters. head on into him. Uh, so down. we'll uh, play the music. Here I am on the way back. I've shed my warm coat. I'm sitting in a nice warm car on the way back and I'm trying to think of the clips that I have filmed and how they might go with the music. So I play the music. Okay, I'm driving along. The Insta360 Go 2 is on. I use it in the car a few times for pieces like this, pieces of camera. Usually it's pointing in the middle. Con is usually sitting in there uh, when we go running and cycling and then we usually do a some sort of breakdown we're on our way back. I'm going to try and play the audio track from the uh, that I'm going to plan to put to the film. So I've gone out, I've taken all the film, the movies, if you like, I'm just going to press play here and uh, I'll just turn the sound down for a second. Um, but I've got, I've got uh, a music track and I've got 
edited or I've gotten unedited footage. So what I'm trying to do now is listen to the music and see and sort of mentally think how I might put the footage that I know I now have with it and also by showing you how the Insta360 Go 2, uh, what it's capable in terms of sound. So I'll just turn up the sound here and listen away. So I come back in the car, I come into the house and I've got my footage. I load it up, I import it into Premiere Pro um, and I start looking at it. And so the first thing I do is I cut out all the wasted clips, the tops and the tails of the stuff. Um, the GoPro typically films upside down when it's on a stick, so I invert that and I have a look to get an idea of my overall footage. Once I've got that done um, and I know what I've got, I can't redo footage so so I don't want to go back I've, I've done that once but it's it's a rare thing I usually take the footage I've got and make the video and so I've listened to the music I've got the footage and I've got an overall idea of the scope what I then do is I play the music and I put marker points into it so the M key on Premiere Pro will hit a marker point and you can either have it in the music track or in the timeline and then I'm hitting I'm closing my eyes listening to music and hitting the M track regularly and then what I do is I put in little pieces like a, a little adjustment layer or color mat um, that just signifies to me the lengths of each of the subcomponents. In this particular track, I could hear where there's a sudden sweep. So I wanted to put those and you'll see these. I'll show you pictures of the timeline. And so you'll see the sweep of the three. I think there's three sort of sections where violence come in and starts to sweep. So I've got those in my mind. I then take um, the longest clips of sort of me running from the side or from the front that are longer and I put that with those and that gives me an idea of it. I'm trying to find a starting point and an ending point. In this particular one, I wanted to go between the different sides of the shoe um, and I wanted to flash between them. So I did that. It takes a lot of adjustment uh, to get that right and I'm finessing a lot of that. And then I <laughs> wanted this kind of um, dramatic entrance this took le way later in it so i'm filming between uh, the shoes on an arc with the camera i i i love doing those bits i, I but i try not to overdo them and um, but they give me a lot of fun um, and in this one it's dramatic with the music fairly early on and i mean i say early on before i started making the video i was fairly sure i put it into black and white if i got really nice light maybe not but i decided to put it into black and white now to do that I put an adjustment layer out over, over all the clips and get the right level in that. And then I might put a vignette in that as well, but that's all one over, over clips so that it affects all the clips that are below in the timeline. And then I'm just finessing backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards for, uh, well, Saturday morning I was out filming early and then I spent the whole rest of the day. I spent about nine hours editing on Saturday. When I got to the end of Saturday, I realized I'd used some of the clips a few times. I don't like to do that. So uh, on Sunday morning, I had to redo a few bits. Along the way with the clips, sometimes I'm zooming in um, to get rid of a particular aspect. A lot of times I'm, I'm putting a correction because the GoPros warp the footage and I'm trying to straighten it out. Uh, sometimes you come back and it's sort of all going at slightly, so you're, you're twisting it slightly. So do all that, but it takes rather a long time. When I've got that done, I then export that just running section as a movie in itself because at the end of the year I kind of put all of those together and so it's largely a lot of finessing that's broadly how making the running track works typically to in order to to make the video I first of all take the turntable section and I do that it depends randomly what day the the shoe might arrive it's something I'd usually film some lunch hour um early on in the week there's a shoot coming say this thursday and i might do that friday lunchtime something like that and that's in the can and then saturday if i'm making the the running review where i actually go out and do the, the running i try to do that on saturday morning early so then i have the whole rest of the saturday to try and edit that and then the videos go up typically on a on a wednesday night here midnight um so what i'm trying to do then is uh make a piece to camera which is this piece um, today is a Monday as it happens because the class is on Monday and I'm <laughs> frantically trying to get this finished. It's now 2.40 in the afternoon. I've been at this since this particular video. Uh, I've been at this since um, uh, about nine o'clock this morning, setting up the camera, getting all this stuff. And I'm making, in, when I do a shoe review video, I know what I'm doing and I, I kind of do it in one go in terms of the piece to camera, this piece. When I'm making a video that I'm not, it's, it's sort of, off piece to tease a phrase, I'm not really sure. I make it in pieces as I go along. 
When I'm editing, one of the things that I do when I'm editing, you'll see that somehow my head gets bigger and smaller all the time as it goes, starts with a new clip like this. And uh, what I'm trying to do there is um, mask usually something that's happening outside or either mask where I have cut it badly or mask where the light is changing because I'm not in a purpose built studio, the light is changing throughout the day. And so sometimes if there's a gap between them, I'll do something like that. So it's, it's not as obvious that something has changed and it gives a bit of variety because some um, headshot just on and on and on and on without some variety is uh, not interesting. Sometimes I'll zoom in slowly on um, and make it zoom slowly. That takes a bit more time and a bit more finagling and largely I find it doesn't have as much value as I'd like it to have. I do it, uh, I've done it a lot of times when I'm interviewing people. I do that for college sometimes, interviewing someone and they're about to announce an award. I'll zoom in on Ben's head and it zooms in. So just when he says it, bang, uh, it's, it gives it a bit of impact. You'll notice in a lot of interviews on TV, you'll see the camera slowly moves in. Most that's done in post. I could do that in post. I don't have a zooming uh, mechanism here. So I would just zoom in in, in, in in post, which is when I'm doing the editing. In terms of the editing, it's largely fairly straightforward. I, I bring the piece in. What I'm trying to do is make sure the horizon level of my eyes is always the same. So I have a, I set the camera up every time. So it's, it's, it's different each time, but I have a, uh, a, a template of, of rules of thirds for the, for this thing. I try and center myself behind those two things. There's a thing there to try and help me, but usually I get it wrong. <laughs> usually I get it wrong. Uh, I try and make sure that I've got various other bits and pieces for continuity. Like you're always wearing the same shirt, but I'm pretty much always filming the same day. So that's usually not a problem, but sometimes, um, my mad hair, uh, it looks anyway, I try to avoid, uh, doing it. I mean, it's bad, but I try not to make it worse or different. Um, so I try to do that once I'm editing, um, a great way are the J, K and L keys on Premiere Pro. So L is forward, J is backwards, K is stop. And you can double click them so it speeds through the stuff. So I can kind of get used to listening to myself uh, fast forward. <laughs> it's pretty normal, um, but very fast forward to try and check things. Um, they're very useful. Q and W are keys I use. So Q will trim back and uh, W trims forward. Most of the rest is fairly simple stuff. Um, with the piece to, to camera. If you are going to apply effects to clips that you're then going to chop up and you want to have the same effect, do that at the start. It'll save you a lot of time. Uh, that's something I do. I don't apply much effects to the head shots. I do uh, some lots of lookup tables. I'm getting used to using Canon C log three. I'm getting a bit better at that. I won't go into too much of technical details, getting a bit better at that. And I, I, I try those, but essentially, um, the piece to, to the, the camera, the, the headshots, are, it's very straightforward. I mean, you're just trying to edit it. A lot of times you'll see it, it jumps pretty quickly and um, that hides a few, ma can mask a few things, it changes exposure, things like that. Um, so that works quite well. Um, and I try and cut out the, <laughs> I have an awful habit of using the word so. I start so many sentences with the word so. So I try and get rid of those. <laughs> I try and edit those out, it doesn't always work. And ideally I try and keep the same pose. I fail most of the time. Um, so that particularly with shoes that might lift one up and then put it down so that when the next clip <laughs> happens, if it's down, it's down, not sort of midway, but anyway. There are kind of some of the things, again, you never make it perfect. You just sort of get there. So what I'll do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna nip back upstairs, solve all this, and then I'm gonna pick out some of the clips I've made with editing pieces that I quite liked and try and show you some of those. Before showing you a few clips, just a little bit about the waveform, the sound. Uh, I make that as large as I can in the uh, viewfinder so I can see the sound. What happens is, or see the waveforms of the sound, it tells me an awful lot. You might fluff your lines three or four times making a section. Um, and when you look at the waveform, you can see there's a few shorter bits and then a long bit. You think, okay, that's probably the right bit. So start at that and if it is, just clip the others out. Don't spend your time listening to wasted clips. Um, so I do that, including on this particular clip. I think this is the third or fourth time I've had to go with this. So I'll be doing that in a few minutes. Um, so the waveform is really useful to look at. I find it an incredibly useful 
piece of information when I'm editing. To talk about some other things that I do like or have liked, uh, some of the clips, um, I'll show you the introduction to the Sim Alpe shoe I reviewed. Um, and in this one, I, the, there's something in the music that remind me of Blades of Grass. So I made a quick thing about Blades of Grass. <laughs> At the end of that video, um, <laughs> I loved the fact that most times I'm trying to film the sunshine, sometimes I've done black and white as you'll have seen, but this one I came back uh, covered in mud and uh, I really liked the end sequence of this where I just started running down, gingerly down this hill because I was afraid of falling over and then I suddenly stop. And the ending, at the start and the ending are very important keys for me in editing. Another ending I liked was uh, <laughs> the Mac 4, which I took to Baggett Street and it was during the pandemic and I'm running around and just as I stop and I'm doing the last bit, sort of trying to make a, a video around the shoes, I happened to notice that uh, the police were out in their yellow and blue and red car and my shoes are yellow and red. And, and there's a guy, a policeman looking at his phone and I enjoyed that sort of thing. So sometimes you get stuff in the video that you really enjoy, maybe no one will notice it, but actually I find it gives me a lot of fun when I'm doing the editing. In the same vein towards the end, running in the on running cloud ultra and this dog started, and I love dogs, but this dog started yapping at my feet just as I came to an end. And again, it makes for something interesting to put into the video. And again, you can freeze the motion and you can keep the sound going. And I think I did something like that at the end. So you can see the dog yapping and there's a sudden uh, freeze frame on them. <laughs> The most complicated uh, editing I did, I think, was when I did the, um, I ran it last year in uh, an Atreyu artist shoe and I took it out on a particular day in, I was gonna wear this shirt, but I also have this exact shirt in blue, shoe has red and blue, and somewhere in between I decided to uh, edit it. So I was running these arches and one arch I'm red and then, and then I'm blue. I really enjoyed that. I think I showed the clips in the last video, so I won't show them again here. But sometimes stuff like that happens on the way and you sort of make some fun out of it. Uh, sometimes at the start of the Mac 4 video, again, I heard some stuff about the stairs, which is always, and then I sort of show me going up and down the stairs and then I zoom in each time incrementally. Uh, fairly simple, quick effects to do um, in, in uh, post when you're editing the running video. <laughs> I went to Chicago fully intending to review a Nike shoe running around in Kapoor's cloud gate um, in Millennium Park. But it turned out that I, it, it was just, the thing is huge, but it was too small to make a video around and there was too many people. And then I went to Frank Gehry's bridge nearby. Uh, I think it's called the BP Millennium Bridge. And uh, I wanted to make a video, but what happened was, I didn't know what in, it, in advance, but I decided that I mean, it, it probably doesn't make much uh, odds to viewers, but I, I like there. I like there's to be a sort of genuine continuity. So even if you've never seen the bridge, all the steps are in continuity. So what I've got is different pieces of me running up the length of the bridge in 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 different um, angles of cameras, but I don't intersperse them. They are sequential, and then it opens up, and there's a longer run of me just running at the light. The light was extraordinary. So. Thank you. 
trying to get some sort of narrative in the editing and don't do too many effects. I do very little transitions, so um, I don't do any complicated ones. Sometimes um, I'll go through the, the last video, I'll go fade to white, sometimes fade to black, a little bit of that. I don't have complicated swipes generally or that sort of stuff going on. One of the things that you can do in the editing is you can mask stuff. In the start of the Nike Wild Horse video I made in Monument Valley, which I, I loved. There's a sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at going, zooming in on, 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 on the monuments, I suppose, as you call them, the buttes. Uh, and then I, uh, oh, the three mittens, and then as it goes in, uh, it suddenly turns down to my shoe. They're two different clips, but one of the things that's happening is that there's a bang going on in the soundtrack. And because there's a noise, you don't really notice there's actually two different clips jumped together there. Uh, so sometimes you can mask things like that, and that largely just happened in the editing, partly accidental, but you're always on your eye out for these kinds of things to try and make a thing interesting. then if we come to the piece in question, the Takumi Sen 8, um, I think at the end of the last week's thing about equipment and filming, you got to see me out in some rocks with this thing swinging in and out thinking, what on earth is going on? But it translates into the starting clip where, where the camera is moving between my legs and up at the darkness of the sky. Uh, then I had the, the camera set where I've got the shoe uh, at different angles and I'm just using a white uh, background in between that again times to the music and then one of the things I loved in that was when it when it opens out and I'm suddenly running alongside in in the black and white along the sea in Dublin and then another time when it's the same sort of thing I come in I actually clip too so closely into the camera that I run out of frame I, I'm not too bothered about that because ultimately um, I'm kind of getting, I want people to be looking at the, the beauty of the Martello Tower and the people swimming in the waves. And then if you look closely, you can see I run and then I go left up the stairs. But it was at the very last minute, I decided to go left upstairs. So I'm wobbling all over the place. And then as I come down the stairs, again, I'm trying to make it to the music. So a lot of the clips looking down at my feet were deliberately to the music. And the same is true uh, as I come down the stairs. There's a sort of dum 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 going on in the music.
They're the kinds of tricks that I use when I'm trying to make videos. I will explain anything in detail that anybody asks, but I just wanted to give you an overview of what I'm trying to do. The main thing I'm trying to do is get better. Um, and then I'm also trying not to overthink it. If I make a mistake one week, it's okay. There's another one to go out next week. It's, it's um, yeah, continuous improvement. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be plenty of stuff down in the links below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some rated videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.